Hello friends, my name is Theo and today in this exciting Mason Media tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at what I think are the best new features in DaVinci Resolve 16 that Blackmagic didn't really sort of point out in their excellent video. So if you haven't seen the video talking about all the cool new stuff in Resolve 16, go check that out. These are going to be the things that caught my eye in the document that aren't really touched so much. I might accidentally go over some things that Blackmagic already called out in the video, but you know, you can't win them all. So starting the first one, this one wasn't something that I ever thought I needed, but it is it's a great thing. And this is the ability to get rid of this navigation thing down here. So if you go to workspace, show navigation page, you can turn that off and I get just a little more room in your screen. And you know, either if you're already on your color page, you know, you don't really need to be hopping back and forth between stuff. Or if you're an elite pro, you know, user like most of us are, you're just using shift two, four, six, etc to go to where you want to be. There you go, shift six. So now we're on the color page. So now the next one is something that I think every program should have, and that is going to file project notes. And I just have a nice little notepad built in, which is just so handy, because there's so many times whenever you're working on something, like I have to-do lists all the time open for, you know, fix shot three, shot 56 is dark, etc. cetera, um, you know, client and you just sort of have those things and then you can have that and it'll be saved with your project inside the actual project you don't have to put it in your project folder in explorer or um finder or whatever now the next feature is something that we've been wanting for forever and that's to be able to have different timeline resolutions and frame rates in the same project so I'll hit shift forward over to the edit page here we've got a timeline and we'll create a new timeline. Now we can do use custom settings format. We can have this one be an ultra HD one at, you know, 60 frames per second or so. We've got a new timeline ready to go. So super handy, Danny. You can of course also go back and change your timeline settings for existing timelines as well. So just open that up. And now this one should be in Ultra HD. And there you go, I'll go back in here. And everything's in there. And there's also the scale entire image to fit or you can do center crop with no resizing, just whatever you need. So very handy dandy. I like that a lot. That is you know, just a huge quality of life thing. I think they put that in their video also, but that's something that just needs to be double mentioned. Another thing that just has been missing forever is the ability to have non rectified waveforms for you know those video guys out there rectified waveforms are fine but for people who know audio this is this is dumb and stupid and we need full waveforms because that's how we read waveforms in order to view full audio waveforms you can go up to here and then see down there there's the full audio waveforms option but as you can see resolve 16 is in beta, so I can't click on that, but maybe you will be able to. And then next there is tape style scrubbing. So this is just super nice also when editing to be able to find where you want to be. So here, if we scrub through, it's just like being on a tape machine, except for there's no pitch shift. So it keeps things about where it should be and you can scrub through and make it all work totally fine. And then we hop over to the color page and now we can go and we'll add something like a lens blur to this. And you'll see now we have options to better control the keyframes for here. So if we bring this way up to six-ish, five-ish, make a keyframe, go forward, bring it down to zero. Now you can see we have very nice, our lens blur right in there. So we can change this so it's faster or slower, just very nice and easy. The next thing, if we go over to our light box, we now have a much greater range to make these clips really nice and tiny so you can view a whole lot of the project at once, which can be very helpful because the light box is a handy thing, especially if you are in a dual monitor workspace, which I can't show you in this screen recording. And then this is just another little quality of life editing thing. So if you hold down shift and do left or right arrow, you scoot one second at a time. 
which is very nice for longer clips, just scrubbing through stuff, because before you can do that sort of thing, you can skip to the next clip and then go back a frame, or you can use a jog wheel on a control panel, but having that shift arrow button is pretty nice for hopping around and checking different spots of a clip. We also have customizable timeline looping ranges. So very often you'll be working on a project and you wanna loop a section and not just one clip. So here we can open up our timeline section here. And then this makes the timeline actually like much more usable now. So now we can loop this section here of all these clips, which is very nice. So much better than just being able to loop a clip. Now we'll turn this off. And another really nice thing, especially whenever you're working on larger or longer projects or having to pull stuff back is if we have a LUT on here, so I'll go ahead and drop one from the Beauty LUTs pack on here from mistermedia.com slash products. We'll do these added life ones will probably be fun. Yeah, that's interesting. So let's say we don't want to go through and find it. You can go down to reveal selected LUT and I'll pull it up in your LUT browser. So you can say maybe, oh, we wanted the three version instead. So pull that on. Nice, maybe we like the first version better. And let me go ahead and just get rid of my false color plugin entirely on here. You can find that at timingpixels.com using promo code Theo for 15% off. It's an invaluable plugin, highly recommend. Absolutely essential for getting extra confidence, but this is not a Timing Pixels commercial. This is a walking through some of my favorite features in Resolve 16 that Blackmagic didn't mention in their big press release. So now the next thing is a huge thing. So for me, for most people, not so much, but for me, definitely. And that is whenever you drag a key over to something, it's not automatically inverted. So now you can see we have our same key as before. As before it would be like this, which is no good. I just flipped that with the control panel because we don't need to see how to invert keys in this tutorial. But now keys are automatically correct but if you do an outside node it is still how it should be for an outside node so alt o and we get that so just like that this is so nice because before it was really annoying to always have to invert it and that was one of the the good things about a control panel is it made that option faster because before going down to key finding key key input invert that was just terrible also another thing i think they mentioned this but this is just a really nice thing for whenever you're working with clients and this is gang viewer zoom to video output. So now whenever you zoom in here, you can't see, but on my reference monitor, it's zooming in. So the offset is a little bit off, um, just in the beta, but you know, I'm sure they'll fix that eventually. So now whenever you're going through, you can say, you know, zoom in and say, what do you think about her eyes here? And then your client can say, oh yeah, I like that. And you can zoom back out, shift Z if you're a pro, and then have the whole image there again, so. I said, you can't really see what's going on. They just know that my big reference monitor above me, we're zooming in on the image and we can see what's going on. Let's close some of these windows down. There go. And that fixes our offset a little bit up there. Now, another huge one, hit Control Shift W to bring up the scopes. And, you know, of course the scopes look nicer now and all that other good stuff. But we have some other cool things. So I think they mentioned that you have these different color spaces to choose from now, which is very nice. So YCBCR, very cool. But also over in our waveform, if we click and we do just the luminance, we can also have it colorized. So this shows sort of the colors in the scene where they are. And I think that's just really neat. So you can see here's our shirt down here. It's a little bit purpley. See the trees are tree colored. Very cool. And we can do that same thing over with our vector scope. So. We have it colorized, let's go ahead and make it all brighter and we'll do a 2x zoom. Now you can see we've got, here's our greens over here. Other things, we've got a nice thing along the skin tone line. If we increase our saturation overall, hit shift S to create a node beforehand and I'll go over and up the saturation. Now you can see you're changing things around, nice. I wouldn't recommend upping the saturation very much here you know, we're looking pretty good. So having those colorized, it's not really something that's gonna change the way you grade, but it's nice to have. I think it's sort of fun and it looks cooler too. And looking cool is very important. And then of course, there's this other scope down here, which is just very handy to have. 
but I'm pretty sure they went over this in their thing. So just know that we have another little scope that shows us gamut stuff. Now, talking about sort of curves and histograms and scopey things, they talked about the histogram and the curves down here. But they didn't mention we also have histogram for our hue versus hue and these other curves in here, which is even more useful. So especially for luminous versus saturation, I would always guess wrong, and I always think that things are more up here than they were when I was doing stuff. But now you can see we can really roll off the less saturated parts and bring things in in a much more natural and easy way. You can see things are more or less saturated. So this is sort of where our skin's at. Just want to bring that down, maybe bring these highlights up a little bit. Probably not. And we can roll off all this other stuff up here that we don't need. Give her some more life, maybe a little more vibrant. So we've got all sorts of just really excellent controls. So this helps out a lot. I like this feature very much. And our saturation for saturation, I always guess this wrong too. So it's so way more combined down here. Very excellent. We're sort of going a little bit wild there. So we'll bring that back and we just bring down our overall saturation some instead of trying to deal with that curve. Nice. Also, back to our scopes, I forgot to mention our vector scope, we now have the ability to check our shadows, our midtones, and our highlights, and we can change where the range is. So like our lows, I might go to like 0.12 or something. And our high, maybe like 0.5. I can check this is sort of where I like to see midtones at, highlights. Don't have much in the lows, which is totally fine. I want to keep those desaturated. Looking good. So that is very handy. We can also hop back. I would really like the ability to see all three of these in one, one thing. I'm not sure you can hold down. Yeah, you can't hold down shift and do more than one. But so if there's anyone from Blackmagic watching, I'd really like to have just all three of these in one. Where I can see low, mids, highs, and everything all at once. Just because more scopes, the better. It's fun. Scopes look cool. And another thing I'll just mention is we now have a chromatic aberration plugin for resolve effects. I think this is only the studio version, but this will help you to reduce the chromatic aberration in your scene or, you know, bump it up more if you really want to. But this will be a whole tutorial on its own, I'm sure. So here we're making it worse, but you can actually make your chromatic aberration better also. So I think that is pretty nice. And then another just little thing. This is this is silly, but it's something that I've been annoyed that it didn't exist for a while, and that is just an easy way to invert the color without having to go to your curves. So there we go. We can choose which thing we want to invert. Very nice. We can do all sorts of cool stuff with this. And just sometimes you need to invert the color for doing crazy stuff. And look, that's pretty cool. You know, who knows? All right, next we're going to move on to some Fairlight stuff. So we'll go to Fairlight, Immersive, B-Chain Control. Here we can turn this on. Do set up B-Chain I.O. names. Here we've got a bunch of inputs and outputs. So if we set up like the deck link for 5.1 like we have it here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now we have all of this nice routing stuff. I'll set this up eventually. I might have a tutorial on that when we go more in depth. But basically what this does is it'll take the place of any surround processor that you have to run through if you're doing surround. So I've got my place set up for 5.1. And I don't really need too much stuff, but you can set different um, monitor trims or delays. So if you have a really big space, and especially if you're, especially if you're doing Atmos stuff or 7.1 where you have stuff that really needs to sort of be synced up even more, you can set up your little monitor delays. And I should probably do this with my left and right surround speakers. Um, so everything is, is a little better, but they're not too bad. So then you don't have to go into another box to set up delays or extra trims. You can just do that right here. Even have an EQ control, which is very cool. So this is nice. This will save you, you know, a couple hundred bucks just right here having this in, in the computer, which is very nice. And also clean up your audio chain a little bit. One less thing to go through. And then it also, fairly and resolve in general, just has support for higher resolution audio, 96 and 192 kilohertz, which I've encountered zero projects with that, but I like that it exists, even though it has been proven many times that it does not matter. I still wish that it did. Now, finally, we'll move over to our deliver page, and there's a bunch of stuff in here, but the most interesting things I found, if you go over to audio, we can now output all timeline tracks. So if you have, if you're doing like a TV show or something, and you're doing the edits, you can render out 
all of the dialogue tracks that you have or sound effects or whatever things. So someone else can go get it if you don't want to do an AAF or something like that. Or if you're just in a situation where you need this. Or probably very, very relevant if you're doing like DIT stuff or like I would do whenever I DP it a lot more for other people and didn't do the post for it is I would make, um, I'd make dailies for clients in Resolve. And this way I could have all of the audio tracks be in there with the daily. So I go through and color stuff because I've realized that I got a lot more work if I colored my clips instead of having them deal with the log stuff. And more than once, log files showed up on TV and I got very not happy about that. But that's a different story. Then we also have the ability to disable updates during renders on just so that whenever we render, it isn't pumping out. It'll make the render a little bit faster probably. I like having them on just because I'll check and I'll often see you know, sometimes I'll forget to grade a shot or it's just the wrong version or, or something like that. So anyway, there's the features that I thought were really cool that weren't mentioned. At least most of them weren't mentioned in the cool video that Blackmagic put out. If you have any other favorite features that were mentioned in either that video or this video, let me know because I'd love to check them out. These are a lot of nice little um, quality of life things that I think are really cool. So anyway, if you stuck around this long, good for you. This has been a long video. But if you like this video and you're still around here, I'm guessing you liked it. So give this video a like. Apparently that helps things out. Subscribe to the Mist Media YouTube channel if you want even more good stuff like this. All sorts of Resolve 16 things. Apparently Fusion is more stable now. And I was like the only update they had with Fusion is like it doesn't crash as much as it used to. So maybe we'll start diving into Fusion again some if it gets usable. And if more than one person asks for Fairlight stuff, maybe we'll do some audio mixing. Now, who knows? Everything is possible. Um, also check out mistymedia.com slash products. Uh, if you want cool LUTs or stock footage, or if you just like the tutorials and you want a way to support, you, you can just buy stuff and never use it. That works for me too. So once again, I've been Theo with Meester Media. Have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.